What gives me anxiety is if I go to the gym, this is the anxious thought because it's not holding a thought. So here comes the anxiety. The anxiety bumps out. People will think I'm out of shape. Then you're no longer focused on going to the gym. You're focused on what people think. This is the anxiety. Anxiety is a really powerful thing to bump motivation out of your mind. So let's talk a little bit about motivation chat. So the first thing to understand is like when I ask y'all, you know, how do you get motivated? Or when I ask you, like, what is motivation? What do most people say, right? So what most people will do is they'll, like, look at someone who they perceive is motivated and they'll be like, oh, that person is motivated. And if I ask them, like, you know, what does that mean to be motivated? It means, and then you'll get some kind of answer, like, they get up and they do it every day. You know, they they get up, they, they'll, they'll use some kind of, like, they'll say, like, okay, they get up, they do it every day, they're dedicated, they're disciplined, they have dharma, have a goal and work towards it, right? Like, that's beautiful examples. Like they, they have a goal and they actually get up and they work towards it. So that's kind of interesting because if you think about it, what that really is, is like you looking from the outside and observing a behavior, right? And you say that, oh, motivation is a behavior. Because if we're observing from the outside, and this is sort of how Western science works, this is actually like a really interesting bias that our entire society has, is that when we look for answers to questions, we look from the outside and, and look in. So this is like in medicine, you know, we'll do an x-ray to figure out what's going on in the lungs. We'll do a biopsy. We'll do a blood test. We'll try to get some sort of scientific external perspective. This is exactly what Freud did as well, right? So when he was developing his psychological theories, what he did is talk to other human beings from the outside, listen to their words, and make implications about what is going on on the inside. So when we talk about motivation and we sort of start to think a little bit about what is motivation, the perspective that we take is from the outside looking at behavior. So therein lies like one of the biggest problems and why motivation is a huge challenge. And so if I ask people what is motivation, I'm going to get a hundred questions because it's like a hundred people looking at the out from the outside. And then when you try to duplicate a behavior, it falls apart. And why does it fall apart is because motivation is nothing about your behavior. It has everything to do with about the mind. So if we really think about what is motivation, it's an internal thing. Okay. So like, if I say like, I'm motivated, I don't say it's like I'm saying things that are very simple, but motivation exists within the mind. It's not, it has nothing to do with behavior. It's, it sounds crazy. It may result in behavior, but if we look at actually what is motivation, it is purely mental. It is like within the mind. And so this is where I think a lot of people fall short because when they try to figure out how to get motivated, what they end up looking at is like people who are motivated and they try to like see their behaviors and duplicate their behaviors. And this is where we get to the just do it kind of stuff, right? Just study, just go to the library, just go to the gym, just take a shower, just start using deodorant, just clean your room. Right. Because like and, and this is the problem is like that's all external stuff. It's all like behavioral stuff. It's not actually motivational stuff. And since our society is so good at looking from the outside in, that's what science basically is. We've sort of missed understanding what motivation is. And so then what we end up doing is like mimicking the, we try to mimic like the outside behavior, right? So they, they look, you look at someone you're like, oh, that dude is motivated. They go to the gym every day. So let me go to the gym every day. And they just mimic the behavior. But this is where like, if you just mimic the behavior without the internal component, you're destined to fail. And this is something that I see a lot in the spiritual community, right? You'll have someone who's like very spiritually detached and, and like, you know, like a, a, a monk or something like that. And like that person is relatively like not materialistic. Like they don't care what they wear. They're never wearing jewelry. They don't wear watches. They don't care about what they drive and things like that. And then someone will look at that person. They'll say like, oh, if I want to be spiritual, I need to be non-material. And so they'll impose non-materialism on themselves, but they're completely missing the point because the, the spiritual person isn't trying to be non-materialistic. They're just genuinely detached. They don't care if they wear a watch or they don't wear a watch. But you're trying to impose non-materialism from the outside is like an example of mimicking a behavior instead of understanding what's inside the mind of the monk. And so the more that we try to copy what motivated people do without understanding what's on the inside, the more destined we are to fail, which is why we have a society of people who's struggling with motivation. I read an article recently about like young people in China who are doing something called laying flat. 
which means that they're just kind of chilling. Like they're not engaging in sort of like the rat race of society. And, and so it's like they're sort of like embracing laziness and they sort of seem kind of unmotivated or something like that. And it's kind of like it's this thing where there's something going on inside that person's mind that is resulting in a particular behavior. And the biggest mistake that we make is we try to duplicate the behavior instead of understanding what is in the mind of a motiva motivated person. And so luckily enough, I've, I've had, you know, some degree of personal experience in sort of discovering how to become motivated. And I've also worked with a lot of like very successful motivated people, right? So I, I've worked with, um, you know, we do consulting for a lot of major tech companies. Um, I, I've done a lot of like consulting and worked with like, uh, you know, mental health startups, tech startups out of MIT and like Harvard incubators, things like that. Um, I've worked with a couple of billionaires who have started successful com companies and sort of here's what I've discovered when I ask them, I don't observe from the outside what they've done. When I ask them, like, what does it mean to be motivated? What is actually going on inside your head? Then, like, the answer that I get is, like, really, really interesting, okay? And so if you ask people, like, and, and let's, before we get to that answer, like, I'll ask other people, like, what do you think is in the mind of a motivated person? And so the common answer that we get is actually um, that, you know, so we'll say people will say things like they want it more, right? So if I like ask, like, let's say I just asked a random person on the street, why is one person successful and one person not successful? A common answer that I get is because people want it more. And, and so this just simply isn't true. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but like, you know, as an addiction psychiatrist, like I work with people who are sober, hopefully, and I work with people who are not sober. And what I can tell you with, a lot of confidence is that if you take someone who's one week sober versus someone who's not sober at all, the person who's one week sober wants the marijuana or, or alcohol way more than the person who's actively using that. The, how much they want it is actually like so much stronger in acute one week into sobriety than like the person who's using it every day. So it isn't that some people want it more. And we sort of see this sometimes within our community as well, right? Like if I'm like, lonely, I want companionship and friends so much more than someone who like has friends. Like we see this sometimes like in, in places like the incel community, but let's just talk about our community as a whole. Like there's an epidemic of loneliness and everyone wants connection more than anything else, right? So wanting it more is not motivation. That's the first thing to understand. Okay. And then sometimes we'll also get these answers like they're disciplined. But then if I ask someone, what does it mean to be disciplined in someone's mind? What does the mind of a disciplined person look like? Okay. And then they'll be like, they just get up and do it every day. Just, there's the just again. So when you ask people like, what is the origin of motivation? Like they'll give you these answers like, oh, they want it more. They're disciplined. But that's all like one is an external observation of behavior, which is not what motivation is because motivation is within our mind. We can see the outcomes of motivation right? But we don't see the inside of it. We can see the effect of it, but we still don't know what it is. And then the problem is if you chase the effect and you don't understand like the equation, then you're going to get stuck because you can't mimic it because you don't actually know what it is. So I would argue that motivation is actually something that's very simple. It is the ability to hold a thought steady in your mind for a prolonged period of time. That's all motivation is. So I would say with all of my experience, the one conclusion I've come to about what motivation is, is literally holding a thought in your mind for an extended period of time. Okay. So let's think about like a new year's resolution for a second. When someone starts with a new year's resolution, you ask them on day one, they're like, I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year. And I ask you on a scale of one to 10, how motivated are you? And they're like, I'm 11 out of 10. I want it. I'm motivated. I'm going to do it. It's going to be good. And if you actually like, you know, assess them, their motivation is super high. And then two weeks later, like their motivation is still like pretty good. And then a month and two months go by and three months go by. And like what changes in their mind? Like what, what actually, where does the motivation go? And what happens is they have a thought over here that gets bumped by another thought, right? It's like, oh, I need to go to the gym, but I want to stay in bed. And there's almost this like thought bumping process that destroys motivation. And I know it sounds kind of weird, but like we can also understand this. Actually, there's a great example of this, which is sort of bizarre, which is procrastination. 
So if we think about procrastination, procrastination is your mind's ability to try to motivate you, okay? So it's like, let's say I'm going about my day, like I'm going to chill today, I'm going to do some streaming. And then procrastination comes in, it's like, bump, hey, we've got a test. And then I'm like, oh, screw that. Forget about the test. And then here comes the thought again, oh, we've got a test. Oh, no, forget about that. Let's play some League of Legends. Oh, we've got a test. No, screw you. We don't have a test. Let me distract myself. So if you think about literally what procrastination is, it is your mind trying to put a particular thought to be steady in your mind. And so one week away, you know, you kind of get bumped a little bit. Like, here comes the thought. We just push it away. Forget you. We, we don't want to think about the test. We actively try to not think about the test. That's why we distract ourselves when we procrastinate. And there's that voice again. Here comes the thought. Here's the test. Here's the test. Oh, no, no. Screw you. Go away. Okay, fine. And then what happens is the day before the test, here it comes. And then we can't push it away. The, the ability to push the thought out of our head disappears. And then our mind is dominated by the thought of the test. And then we start studying in last minute panic, right? It's kind of fascinating because if you look at procrastination, it's like your mind's ability to try to motivate you and get you to study. And we actively try to push it away. And what I find from people who are, you know, very, very actively motivated is that they're literally, they don't feel like they're disciplined. They don't feel like they're amazing. They don't wake up every day with like a fire in their belly. And like, it's not like these montages from movies. It's just, they wake up. Like if you ask someone who goes to the gym every day, you just ask them like, what's in your head? They're like, I'm going to go to the gym. Got to go to the gym. Let's go to the gym. That's it. They just hold that thought steady and it doesn't get bumped by anything else. So motivation is simply the ability to put something in the center of your mind and keep it there, right? And if you guys look at, at your cases of motivation, like some of y'all may have tried to go like pro in an esport, or you tried to cl climb the ladder or something like that, right? Or you decided like, and like ha what was in your head when you were like grinding out a whatever thing? It's holding that thought steady. And so then y'all may say like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Like, you know, but is there any science to back this up? And the answer is like overwhelmingly yes. Okay, so let's like take a quick look at the science that supports this theory. The first is that like, let's take a, a disease like ADHD. So in ADHD, what someone's mind is, is like incredibly flighty and incredibly fast. Why on earth would we give a stimulant medication to someone whose mind is moving way too fast. Because when you give a stimulant medication, literally what it does in the mind of someone with ADHD is it allows them to hold a thought, a single thought in their head for a long period of time. If we look at like ADHD and why these people struggle to be motivated, even though they want it a ton, they want so bad to be a good student. They try so hard, but their mind literally cannot hold one thought in their head. When I open my book with ADHD and I try to put my mind on one place, it literally does not stay there and it goes somewhere else. And therefore I feel like I can't actually like read something, right? So it's kind of bizarre because it's like, there's a really interesting test of this hypothesis is that we actually have a medication that causes people's minds to sit in one place. We also see this not just in ADHD, but if you think about caffeine and like when you caffeine, when you drink caffeine and it allows you to focus, what does that mean allow you to focus? It means it allows your mind to sit on one thought and then you get shit done. We also see holding a thought steady in the mind in other unfortunate cases in mental health, like in depression and suicidality. Right? So when I think about a patient who's highly suicidal and I ask them and they're like motivated, when I ask them what is going on in their mind, they have one thought that dominates their mind, which is that I don't want to be alive anymore. I don't deserve to be alive anymore. It's kind of bizarre, but when you think about people like the people that I'll actually hospitalize, it's that their mind is dominated by one thought, which leads to a high amount of motivation, right? So it's interesting because we don't think about someone who's depressed and suicidal as motivated, but if you really want to be scientific about it, you know, making a suicide attempt requires a huge amount of like, direction and motivation. Is it in the wrong direction? Absolutely. Is it a problem? Absolutely. Should you go get mental health treatment or an evaluation if that's happening in your mind? Absolutely. And at the same time, the mechanism in your mind that leads to a behavior can be understood through procrastination, through ADHD, 
through addiction and through depression even. And so then the next question that we would ask ourselves is, okay, Dr. K, like if this is true, is there data to support this outside of clinical experience and psychiatry and stuff like that? Like on a more basic science level, is there science to support this idea? And the absolute, the truth is, uh, the, the answer is absolutely yes. And that is because if, if there were a practice, so you could make a hypothesis that if there was a practice that you could do to keep a thought steady in your mind for a prolonged period of time, would that result in an increased amount of motivation? And the answer is yes. There have been thousands of studies on meditation that show exactly that. So if we look at meditation, what meditation is, is it's the ability to like tell your mind to do a particular thing and have it listen, right? So we'll concentrate on the breath. We'll concentrate on a yantra. We'll concentrate on a mantra. We'll concentrate on, you know, sight or sound or touch. And you tell your mind to do something. And this is what's really fascinating is, is that when you train people to meditate, what happens is their ADHD clinically gets better. Even without ADHD, what you find, so this is why, you know, I, I teach meditation at like corporations and stuff. And what I find is that people's like motivation and focus and their output improves when I teach them to meditate. You also see this in very rare cases of like people whose motivational circuitry is actually like compromised. So if you look at the brain of some, someone who has schizophrenia, they actually have a lot of motivational problems, which seem to be very neuroscientifically grounded. And the really fascinating thing is that we don't really have any medications that will affect their motivation circuitry. We have medications that'll do things like reduce hallucinations, but we don't have medications that will help those people get out of bed in the morning. But what is really interesting is there are studies on schizophrenia and meditation that show that meditation is actually effective at reducing what we call negative symptoms, which is problems like anhedonia and amotivation. And so it's super fascinating, but I would posit to you all that, you know, the biggest mistake that people make about motivation is that when you're trying to motivate yourself, what you're doing is looking outside. You're making an observation of behavior instead of understanding mind, like what's going on in the inside of the mind. And I want you all to understand that you can never learn about motivation from like looking at someone's behavior. Motivation, if you really want to understand motivation, you need to look inside the mind because that's what it comes, that's what it comes down to, right? Whether I go to the gym or I don't go to the gym, the action is rooted in what is in my mind. And furthermore, if you really look very carefully across a lot of different situations, like people, addictions, mental health, you know, studies on meditation, what the conclusion that I've come to is motivation is simple. Motivation is simply the ability to hold a thought in your head for a prolonged period of time. And what I'll, what I'll say to you guys is like, you know, when I wake up and like, I have a thought, it's like, I need to stream today. Like that's a thought and the thought is held in my head. And that's how I end up streaming, right? Because there have been times today where you may say, but, but you need to, isn't that a need? No, because there have also been times in my life where it's like, I wake up, I have a Spanish final today. I need to go to the Spanish final. Otherwise, I will fail Spanish class. And then it's like, okay, let me load up War 3. Right? So the need is separate. The motivation, it, it, in, in that moment, what does my mind do? It Here's the Spanish final. Here comes Warcraft 3. Bump. Oh, now we're playing War 3 for eight hours. Woo. Where did the thought of the Spanish final go? It didn't go anywhere. It just disappeared. Right? So I would posit to you all that motivation is the ability to hold a thought steady in your mind for a prolonged period of time. And that like once you understand this thing and as, as you cultivate the ability to hold one thought steady in your mind for a prolonged period of time, that's all it is. You can like li literally practice that. As you practice that, you will become more productive. You will become more motivated because that's what motivation is. It's not like some special you know, fire, like, sure, you can say dharma and all that kind of stuff. But even if you talk about dharma and other things, what that all results in, the common element to need and should and duty and responsibility and passion and wanting and desire, all of those words through the mechanism of holding a thought in your mind, the, when the, all of that crap holds a thought in your mind is when you act. And that's, that's it. Can you be motivated and actively not look forward to the work you have to carry out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Because motivation is simply holding the thought in my mind. So I can like hold the thought in my mind that I have to do something today. And as long as I don't displace the thought, I don't have to enjoy it, but it'll get done. Okay. So people are asking, 
Holding multiple thoughts, you can't hold multiple thoughts in your head. You can only hold one thought. How can I practice holding a, a thought in my mind? Yeah, so one meditation that I think is really, really good for that is trataka, or fixed point gazing. So dharana techniques, which are focusing techniques, will be good for that. So you don't want to do mindfulness here. Although mindfulness is effective, but in my experience, there are some te techniques that are more effective, which is dharana. And so someone's asking about obsessions. So could obsession be a part of it? Absolutely, right? Let's think about that for a second. So if I'm obsessed with something, I'm thinking about it all the time. So if you look at like OCD, right? What is OCD? Like I cannot shake the thought. So if you guys, I don't know if you'll know this, but in, in OCD, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. So a compulsion is a behavior and obsession is a thought. So what happens in OCD is that people discover that there is a thought that is lodged in their head that they can't get out. And the only way to dislodge it is to engage in a compulsion or a behavior. Oh my God, my, my hands are unclean. And the only way I can dislodge that thought is by washing them 13 times. And what people sort of figure out what OCD really is, is the compulsions, the behaviors are solutions to let go of the obsession. So OCD is actually the best example of this principle. And if you think about people who are like obsessed with stuff, that's all they think about and that's all they're motivated towards, right? Like you can see it in video game addiction too. Desire is also focus on one thought. No, desire is something else. A desire is a want, right? It's not a focus on one thought. Like I desire a yacht, but I'm not focused on it 24 seven. So a desire is born of the indriyas or the sense organs. So if we think about where our wants truly come from, they come from our sense organs, right? I can't want a yacht until I see one. And I see like people partying on a yacht and I'm like, wow, that looks like a lot of fun. I want that. If you're walking down the street and you smell someone like, you know, frying food, it's like, wow, I want that. Where did that want come from? It came from a sensory stimulus. So how do you navigate life if you have good motivation, but no desires? That's the best way to navigate it. Right. So like motivation is about holding particular thoughts. And, and here's the thing. Desires are the thing that bump the thought. Right. If I want to eat healthy. And then I smell fried chicken that bumps. So if we think about what are the things that bump the thought that I want to be motivated towards desires, bump them. So if you as you become free from desires, you will actually become more motivated. Okay, how do you balance holding a single thought in your mind and bouncing between activities or being vata inclined? So like, it's actually quite easy because when you are doing one thing, that is the thought that you have in your mind. So here's what I'd say as a vata, okay? So this morning, for example, like I did some writing, I did some stream prep, I saw a client and now I'm streaming. And so if we think about like what happened is when I sit with a client, that is what my mind is focused on. And then when I'm done sitting with a client, my mind shifts to something else and that's what I hold and I work on that. And then like now that I'm streaming, this is what my mind is on. So I'm like, this is the thought that's in my mind. It's like now it's time to stream. So you can rotate between things in your mind. That's okay. And then you're going to be motivated to the, for those for that period of time. What if focusing on the thought of what I need to do gives me anxiety? Yeah, so that's a good question, but that's where focusing on the thing that you need to do does not give you anxiety. I know this is going to sound weird. So the question was, what if focusing on the thing that I need to do gives me anxiety? That is incorrect. That is not what is giving you anxiety. What is giving you anxiety is the consequences of doing it or not doing it. It's not focusing on the thing. It's the outcome of the thing that leads to anxiety. So this is the other thing. Remember, it's holding a thought steady. So... If the thought that I'm holding is go to the gym, what gives me anxiety is if I go to the gym, this is the anxious thought because it's not holding a thought. So here comes the anxiety. The anxiety bumps out. People will think I'm out of shape. Then you're no longer focused on going to the gym. You're focused on what people think. This is the anxiety. Anxiety is a really powerful thing to bump motivation out of your mind. Do y'all get that? It's, it's critical to understand this because it's so damn subtle. But it's huge to understand this. Focusing on the task is not what gives you anxiety. In fact, anxiety is what keeps you from focusing on the task. The nature of anxiety is the consequence of doing the task or, or not doing the task. If I don't go to the gym, people will think I'm fat. If I go to the gym, people will think I'm fat. 
That's not focusing on going to the gym. It's focusing on people thinking you're fat. Do you all understand that? This is critical. Do you guys get that? Anxiety is the biggest hammer that knocks crap out of your mind. This is crucial to understand. It doesn't actually keep the thought. It keeps the consequences of the thought. Okay, what if nothing but the, that hedonistic dopamine can't think of any goal like for my life outside of the next dopamine thing? Also worrisome since I'm almost 40. So this is another good example of like a question that gets at the general topic but is missing the general point. So goals have nothing to do with motivation. Okay, another weird thing, right? So if you like really talk to people who are highly motivated, they're usually not motivated towards a goal. They can be, but like, you know, people who are motivated tend to focus on the action, not the goal. So if you think about like, you know, the best students, some of them may really want to like get a 4.0 GPA and that's what they're thinking about. But what they're really thinking about is like the task. If we think about things like flow states and optimal productivity and motivation, it's like devoting yourself to the task at hand, not the goal. And so if you're motivated, like if, if your motivations are based on hedonistic dopamine, like that's absolutely why you're not going to get anywhere, right? Because let's think about hedonistic dopamine for a second. So what is the relationship between hedonistic dopaminergic stuff and like this model of motivation? So what that means is that I am highly motivated towards something like, oh, I want to smoke pot. And then I smoke the pot. And then what happens to the thought? It disappears. I'm good. And then another thought comes in. Oh, now I want to eat Cheetos. And then I satisfy that thought in my mind. And then I get a dopamine hit. And then it's like, okay, let's play some games. And then you get that dopamine hit. And so if you really think about it, what, what's happening is you have tiny amounts of motivation towards individual tasks, which is why you call yourself unmotivated in life, because there's no central thought that you hold on to. Literally, dopamis, uh, hedonistic indulgence and dopamine reinforcement doesn't lead to what we call motivation on the outside, because you're not actually holding a thought in the middle of your mind for a long period of time. Dopaministic a uh, hedonistic like dopamine satisfaction is actually like just cycling like random thoughts and being motivated towards them, right? And that's what it means. It's like, okay, now I'm going to eat this thing and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. So this is why I think like this, once you understand the principle that all motivation is, is holding one thought in your mind, a lot of these questions will start to make sense. And this is the problem is that everyone has these questions. What about dopamine? What about anxiety? What about this? What about that? E equals MC squared. Once you understand e equals MC squared, you can take any number of test cases revolving, involving this crap, and it can all be reduced down to the equation. And the problem with motivation right now is that everyone is looking at all of these random things like, oh, there's research on dopamine. So let me go read about that. And oh, what about dopamine? What about anxiety? What about this? What about that? All that crap can be reduced down to holding a thought steadily in your head. That's it. How do I get self-discipline to achieve long-term goals? You don't. This is the problem. That kind of thinking is the problem. Because that is a thinking of from, that comes from looking from the outside. Right? You Like, where do you get the idea that there is a thing called self-discipline? And where do you get the idea that there is a long-term goal? Like, what is that based on? It's based on observing other people and concluding, oh, that person has self-discipline because they are able to move towards a long-term goal. But if you actually ask that person, are you disciplined? They will, they may say yes and they may say no. Discipline is not a thing in your mind. Discipline is an emergent property. It's like flight, but it's not a feather. It's not a wing. It's not a bird. It's not a muscle. Discipline is not something that you can create. It's an emergent property from other things. And so this is the problem is like if you set out trying to create flight, you will never be able to create it. What you have to do is create the components of flight and then flight will emerge. A feather is not flight. A muscle is not flight. A bone is not flight. In that same way, discipline is an emergent property that you can see from the outside. But how you make it and what you observe are fundamentally different. Do you guys get that? The question is rooted in a false understanding of the thing. And it's, it's simply like, do you guys get this? 
The reason no one finds self-discipline is because it's not a real thing. And everyone's constantly asking themselves, how do I get self-discipline to achieve long-term goals? And you're setting yourself up for a standard that when you don't get, you feel like you beat yourself up and you feel like a dumbass. And it's like impossible to begin with, which is why a thousand people are asking the question and a thousand people are failing. And then once you're dealing with that negative emotion of like, oh, look at all these disciplined people out there and like, I suck. That makes things even worse. Because then anytime you try to do something, guess what's coming? Let me go to the gym. I suck. I suck. I suck. I suck. And then you sit there at home and you never go to the gym. It's tough. This is the problem is people don't understand the root of what motivation is. And once you understand what it is on the inside and you start to cultivate it, then long-term goals will start to get achieved. It's like, I know this sounds kind of weird, but do you guys think I have long-term goals? I do not have long-term goals. Would you describe me as motivated if I accomplished a lot? Sure. Do I have long-term goals? No. It's bizarre, right? Like, what do I do? Like, I wake up and it's like, what do I need to do today? So when I ask y'all, like, you know, why, why we're doing this? Why are we doing this instead of talking to someone? Because I, we ask ourselves the question, this is like the mission of the organization. It's like, what do these people need? It's not about the law. It's not like, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I want you to just think about this for a second, right? We don't wake up at Healthy Gamer and think to ourselves, a decade from now, where do we want gamers to be? That is not the question we ask ourselves. The question that we ask ourselves is, what do y'all need now? Who the... F I don't know where y'all are going to be in 10 years. How on earth... What is... It? Like, I don't know. But what I know is y'all need something today. And so it's like we sit there and we ask ourselves, okay, what do gamers need? All right, they don't understand motivation. Let's do a bit about motivation. Okay, people have questions on the subreddit. Let's answer those questions. And this is what a present-focused mindset means. Right? It's like focusing on like, like, like what is your long-term goal to lose 50 pounds? Like that's not, that doesn't get you to go to the gym or it can sometimes, but what gets you to go to the gym is to hold that thought centrally in your mind. And for some people, it doesn't sort of matter what the thought as long as it gets you to go to the gym. If the thought that you're holding centrally is I need to lose 50 pounds and you hold it in your mind constantly, you'll be motivated. If the thought is I need to go to the gym today, you'll be motivated. You'll go. So the goal itself is not as important as the mechanism through which the goal acts in your mind. Does that make sense? And this is the problem is everyone is out there looking for the right goal. Like you're thinking if you find the magical formula, then it'll sit in your mind automatically. Right? You're trying to, but just need to get it to sit in your mind. Like practice that. That's what Trataka is. Yeah, <laughs> this is a good question. So Revelation V asks, what does need to mean? Exactly. What does that even mean? 